Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the joy and privilege of serving the United Methodist Churches of Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox as a merged congregation, sharing God's love with all those we can. I invite you into an attitude of prayer and contemplation as we join together on this journey, exploring the divine grace which God avails to all people. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Friends, hear the invocation. Lord, you have promised to meet those who seek your face. Come now and reveal your presence to me as I make myself present to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Friends, our theme this week is the Lord is with us. The Lord is with us. The Lord is with you. God is with us. I hope you've uh, lived into that joy a little bit this week. I hope you go into the weekend living into that joy as well. Our theme psalm this week has been Psalm 121. Today we will conclude it. Verse 7 and 8. The Lord will protect you from all evil. God will protect your very life. The Lord will protect you on your journeys, whether going or coming, from now until forever from now. God bless the reading of the psalm. I love this psalm. And again, we talked a little bit about it yesterday, but this idea that what are we being protected from? We're being protected from the things that truly destroy us, truly eat away at our very spirits. And if we can lean on God, if we can, we lean into asking for help and and looking towards the hills and reminding ourselves where our help comes from those terrible, terrible evils won't eat away at us. The the fears and the uncertainties, the anxieties won't eat away at us, the doubts. And, and I'm not saying we won't have those kind of things. Those things pop up and, and, and where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord. You, do you hear it's, it, 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 it's, it's this this litany that we repeat, it's this song that we sing. This is a song that pilgrims would sing as they returned to Jerusalem for high holy holidays. This is a litany, a song, a hymn that they would repeat over and over again. A prayer that they would sing. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. You can almost see a... a, uh, a group of people, you know, thousands of years ago, uh, kind of traveling in a caravan towards Jerusalem and, and singing that as a call and response. I raise my eyes towards the mountains. Where will my help come from? And the people say, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And, and you can see that kind of call and response. Beautiful. L- let it live in your heart. Because when it lives in your heart, it it, it, it becomes who you are. And it can transform you, help you, heal you. Again, our anthology reading today comes from In Search of the Beyond by Carlo Corretto. What exactly is it, this famous eternal life? Jesus himself defined it in the gospel. An eternal life is this, to know you, the one, only, true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So eternal life is, first and foremost, knowledge. It is a matter of knowing the Father, knowing Jesus, but it is not a question of any external, historical, analogical knowledge which we could more or less imagine, possess perhaps, even now. It is rather a question of real, supernatural knowledge, which although it is still surrounded here by the darkness of faith, It is already the same as the knowledge we will have when the veil is torn aside and we see God face to face. It is a question of knowing God as God is, not as God may appear to us or as we may imagine God. This is the heart of the mystery I've tried to describe as the beyond, and which is the key to the secret of the intimacy with God and the substance of contemplative prayer. 
In giving us eternal life, Jesus gives us that knowledge of the Father, which is already our first experience of living here on earth, the divine life, which is a vital participation here and now in the family of God. And which means that while we remain sons of man, we are the same time sons of God. Jesus is the image of the Father, the center of the universe and our history. Jesus is our salvation, the radiance of God. We cannot see the unquenchable fire and love of love, the one for whom the angels sigh, the Holy One of God, the true adore, the eternal high priest, the Lord of the ages, the glory of God. Jesus is also our brother. As such, he takes his place beside us to teach us the path we must follow to reach the invisible and to make sure that we understand. He translates into visible terms the invisible things he has seen. As a man, he acts as God would act. He introduces us to the ways of the family of God on earth and into the family of man. Powerful words. Powerful words. What is eternal life? John Wesley would describe it as joy. Eternal joy. Carlo is describing it as knowledge, experience, understanding of who God is, of the great beyond, of the divine, of God. And as Christians, we believe that we know God the Father through God the Son, that Jesus showed us uh, in a very visible way the invisible God who for so many years we claimed was beyond us. And as Christians, let's do what he did. Let's, you know, as a Christian, I'm, I'm not... I'm not obsessed with, you know, cherry picking various verses of the Bible and saying this is God's word. I'm obsessed with listening to what Jesus said and watching what he did and and hearing what he commanded and doing likewise. Everything else is great and I, I need everything else for context. And I need everything else for experience. And there have been so many people smarter and more faithful than me uh, who have written about it and spoke about it and preached about it. And I have all that information too. But at the very center of my being, it's Jesus Christ. And if I don't know what he taught, what he did, if I don't try to emulate him as much as possible, that I don't call myself Christian. And I certainly don't offer others advice. Because I do believe he is the way, the truth, and the life. And I believe he is with you, with me. And he offers us love, peace, faith, joy. That he offers us life eternal. Our final scripture reading this week is Leviticus 26, 1 through 13. You must not make any idols and do not set up any divine image or sacred pillar. You must not place any carved stone in your land bowing into it because I am the Lord your God. You must keep my Sabbaths and respect my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you live according to my rules, keep my commands and do them. I will give you rain at the proper time. The land will produce its yield. The trees of the field will produce their fruit. Your threshing season will last until the grape harvest, and the grape harvest will last until planting time. You will eat your fill of food and live securely in your land. I will grant peace in the land, so you can lie down without anyone frightening you. I will remove dangerous animals from the land, and no sword will pass through it. You will chase your enemies, and they will fall before you in battle. Five of you will chase away a hundred, a hundred will chase away ten thousand, and your enemies will fall before you in battle. I will turn my face to you, will make you fruitful and numerous, and I will keep my covenant with you. You will be eating the previous year's harvest when the time has come to clear out and make room for the new one. I will place my dwelling among you. I will not despise you. I will walk around among you. I will be your God. You will be my people. 
I am the Lord your God, the one who brought you out of Egypt's land, who brought you out of Egypt's slavery. I broke your bonds, made you stand up straight. God bless the reading of uh, the law, the Torah, uh, Moses' sermon here. <laughs> And, and certainly, in a lot of ways, this became true for the Israelites. <clears throat> but, but as Christians, we believe this became a finality in Jesus Christ. God among us. God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And, and through the Holy Spirit, God is still with us. And I believe, yeah, there will be a time. I believe in the imagery of a new heaven and a new earth where resurrection will be a reality, a finality. But in the meantime, I believe that God is with us, that he walks with us and talks with us and loves us. And I agree with John Wesley that best of all, God is with us. Take God with you this weekend into your comings and goings and knowing that God will always be with you. Where does your help come from? Friends, my help comes from the Lord, and I hope your help does too. On this final day of the week, we reflect on our offerings, how we can serve and give with our time, our talents, and our treasures, how we are called to be an offering in all things we do. Let us reflect in a moment how we may continue to grow in giving, and adopt an attitude of gratitude. Friends, let us pray the Wesley Covenant Prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.